Now, the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, is undermining the global effort to fight climate change and his actions threaten to unravel it altogether, according to the architect of the Paris Climate Agreement. Laurence Toubiana is calling on Mr Morrison to immediately drop his push to use carryover credits to count towards achieving 2030 targets, saying the bushfires are clear evidence that Australia should be playing a constructive and not a destructive role. Unfortunately, Australia hasn't played a big, a, a positive role in the discussion, the global discussion, uh, in particular in Madrid, I would say. Uh, and it's strange because, in a way, Australia is uh, suffering the impacts of global climate change. And uh, the unique way to protect itself from that is really to be very active, to push other big emitters to go to carbon neutrality and to really, really uh, cut emissions. The Australian Prime Minister argues that using carryover credits is legitimate because it's like money that you've paid off a mortgage. What do you make of that analogy? Uh, well, one is that the Kyoto Protocol uh, is meant to finish by 2020. And the Paris Agreement, and that of course all the negotiation on the carbon market that went through the um, Madrid talks, uh, is really about the next regime starting in 2020 and not referring to a sort of a bank of a stock of uh, credits that were issued in the previous regime, which is a Kyoto Protocol. So um, it's not legitimate. It doesn't refer to any illegal element because the common market uh, agreement is not totally done. And anyway, it's a post-2020 agreement. Mm. So that's a, a, a false argument. Uh, but there is a, a, a more concerning argument, which is a reality. And uh, in reality, we have to cut emissions. And these Kyoto credit are in a way, uh, it's, yes, it's an equivalent of money, but it's not an equivalent of real emission reduction. So uh, it's a dangerous game. And I hope that Australia very soon would stop playing that game. So how dangerous is it for the overall international effort if Australia pushes ahead with the carryover credit argument, just in terms of setting a precedent for other countries? Of course, that will open the door for anybody to say, look, I, in Kyoto I negotiated uh, emission reduction that were really a, a divergent for a deviation for business as usual. And in Kyoto at that time, nobody knew exactly where, how, how dear was the situation of the global warming. So it's really 1995 or 1997 for, for Kyoto Protocol, so many, many years ago. So the precedent would be terrible because, again, there are countries that have their stock, could refer to, I can refer to China, could refer to Brazil and many others, or Russia. And that will, will effectively, uh, I think, kill uh, Paris Agreement definitely. So the whole agreement could unravel? Absolutely, because again, remind us the goals of Paris Agreement is really to get to zero, net zero emission by 2050 or very soon after. This means a real reduction of emissions. Uh, if we have countries that begin to say, look, I made efforts in the past, we should be, uh, that could be accounted for now, where, you know, emi global emissions are rising, everyone, uh, every emission are rising. Uh, and so if you don't reduce this emission effectively uh, because you just refer to some accounting mechanism, that will not change global, global, global warming. Global warming doesn't count on um, uh, accounting, it's just re real emissions. So that will open a loophole that would encourage countries, other countries to cheat and we will really unravel Paris goal. So do you want Scott Morrison to immediately drop that push for carryover credits because he said Australia might not now need the credits to meet that target in 2030, but he still hasn't ruled out using them? I think uh, that's the first step for the Australian government would be to say we will not use this credit. That would be super positive. That would send a message to others that would allow for next year, this year, a sound negotiation on carbon market, because we need carbon market. We need good carbon market. So that's the first time, the first step. And the second step, in my view, 
and it resonates with many provinces and of Australia and cities, is to commit for a long-term target uh, that is really going to net zero. And with these two signals, I think, uh, Australia could make a very, very strong contribution to this year, which is a decisive year for climate. How do you feel about seeing what has happened with Australia's bushfires over the last few months and when you line that up against Australia's attitude at the moment to the global effort to address climate change? Well, you know, it's, it's, one, it's terrible to see these fires and I think that the whole global community is really looking at this terrible catastrophe and feel for Australia. Um, I feel for Indonesia as well, where the floods are terrible as well, and there are so many events that have been happening last year. So I think uh, it's a terrible image, and we are suffering for Australia and for for the wildlife and for the people and for the toxic air pollution you you are suffering and going through. Mm. So uh, I can't imagine that the public, the civil society, the businesses, the cities, everyone should ask now for a strong climate policy. And it's possible, again, uh, the government can make two very important steps. Just say, I will drop this idea of using the Kyoto credit, really think through a very serious climate policy, uh, which allow for economic development and growth, of course, <clears throat> which is based on really a good innovation and technology. And at the same time, just give, give a, a long-term goal, which I think would mm. open the window for serious discussion. And that would be the signal we need from Australia this year. Laurence Toubiana speak to us there from Paris. So she's the, the key architect of the Paris Climate Agreement and she's calling on the Australian government to drop its use of carryover credits to go towards the 2030 target of reducing emissions. I asked that question of the Minister Karen Andrews, uh, but she says uh, the government is sticking with that plan for the moment to use those carryover credits.